Kia ora and welcome to this video on question 1 of the 2021 Skull Calc exam. Uh, question 1 generally in scholarship um, consists of easier problems. Uh, there's five parts to this question and so they're all fairly short problems. Um, each question is worth eight marks so there can't be too many marks for each of the sub questions. Okay so the first first one asks us to use a number line to show where this function here is greater than zero. So one of the common mistakes that students make when given something that's a rational function uh, is that they incorrectly cancel things. So if we factorize the top and the bottom, this problem is kind of designed for us to do the thing that's incorrect. both top and bottom um, factorised. Now if we were to cancel the x plus 1 brackets, because x plus 1 over x plus 1 just equals 1, um, what we're doing there is losing the fact that x can't be equal to minus 1. So if we start off with a number line, the first point of interest is negative 1, because the function there changes its behaviour. At negative 1, the function's not defined. Uh, but pays to actually have a look at this graph to kind of see what we're dealing with. So on your graphics calculator you'll put in this function. Just be careful of your brackets. Okay, and you can see there that um, the function has an x-intercept at x equals 2. It looks like it has an asymptote at x equals 3. And then this x equals minus 1, we know it's not defined there. And if you hover over that point, you might need to zoom in on it. You can see at minus 1, it's actually undefined, but Desmos just doesn't draw a hole there. In a graphics calculator, it might show a missing pixel if you zoom in close enough. So at minus 1, the function's undefined. Now we've dealt with that, we can divide out the common factors like I already have. Um, x equals 3 is another value where the function is not defined. And x equals 2 is where the function equals 0. Okay, so because the function equals 0 there, uh, it's not greater than 0. And then what we do is test either side of that. So from the graph we saw that it was positive there, so it was positive there, so it was negative there and then it was positive there. But we just substitute different values of x in. So for example, um, a value that's less than minus 1, you could pick like minus 100, then the numerator would be negative, the denominator would be negative, and negative divided by negative is positive. Um, in between minus 1 and 2, um, same thing, the numerator and the denominator are both negative. In between 2 and 3, the numerator becomes positive, but the denominator is still negative, so positive divided by negative is negative, and then after x equals 3, so anything bigger than 3, both the numerator and denominator are positive, and so when you divide, you get positive. So the final answer is f of x is greater than 0 when x is less than minus 1, x is, oopsies, x is between minus 1 and 2, uh, x is greater than 3. And notice there that you have to break up the region less than 2 um, because the minus 1 gap um, is where the function is not defined. You could also say x is less than 2, x doesn't equal minus 1 if you wanted to. Alrighty, that's the first one done. The second one, um, I would use a graph to have a look at this one as well. just graph the left hand side uh, as one one graph and the right hand side is another so oh. sorry we want that on the side okay x to the power of x square x um, and then the other one, x to the power of 2x. Now you might be thinking, 
um, because both of the functions have the same base, that the powers would need to be the same. And that is true. Um, but it's not like it's, say, like, I don't know, 2 to the x equals 2 to the 2x plus 1 or something. In the MCAT, you would get a question like that and you would just equate the powers. But because the bases are the same, um, if you do that, if you just equate the powers, you actually lose one of the answers. So if we solve this and we squared both sides, and then we got um, x squared times x equals 4x squared. At this stage, we don't cancel off the x squareds because we lose x equals 0. Um, it's best to um, move it to the left and then factor it. And then this gives us x equals 0 and x equals 4. 0 is actually not possible um, because the function's not defined. 0 to the power of 0 is undefined. Some people argue that it's 1. Some people argue that it's 0, uh, but it's undefined. x equals 4 does work in the problem. Um, but yeah, like I said, at this first step here, what we should do is actually use logs. So if we log both sides, so if I take the log of both sides, like log of x, x root x equals log, doesn't matter what log you use. Um, and then we can bring the powers down in front of the logs. You can see that there's a log x on both sides, and that's kind of like what I was saying here. We didn't cancel the x squared terms, because we would have lost x equals 0, although we ended up ruling it out anyways. Here we've got a log x on both sides, and if we want to cancel that, we have to consider, could it be 0? And log x equals 0 when x is equal to 1. So we have to note down x equals 1 as a solution, then we can cross those off, and the rest is uh, the same, same algebra. So, let's look at the graphs. We've got x equals 1. So the points intersect, and that's because 1 to the power of 1 is equal to 1 to the power of 2. So x equals 1 works. 4 also works, except to get it on the graph I have to zoom out a lot, because um, when x is equal to 4, the right-hand side of the graph becomes 4 to the power of 8, which is huge. Uh, so, if, But 4 does work. You can verify that. And then 0 doesn't. But Desmos doesn't show that detail. It says that 0 is defined as 1, um, but yeah, 0 to the power of 0 is not defined. Okay, so that's question B. Two answers, 1 and 4. Question 3 is a nice one for graphing as well. And so you use, use your graphics calculator to your advantage in the exam. If there's ever a graph, have a look at it. See, so you might have to change your view window around, but it's worthy to getting an answer correct. So we've got two parabolas, one's upside down. It turns out that it's a 180 degree rotation of the other one. Be real careful of minuses in this problem. If we, if we look at that region there, I'm going to just call these functions f and g instead. Um, and then if I sketch the region... Um, I want to be underneath the G graph and I want to be above the the um, F graph. That's the region, the area we're trying to find. And you can tell that we could rotate that region 180 degrees around the origin and it will be the same region. Meaning that it's got symmetry in the line X equals 0, which is the horizontal, sorry, not the horizontal, the vertical axis, the Y axis divides it in half. So the answer is actually quite trivial, um, but it needs a little bit of reasoning. So if I went C and went because of symmetry, x equals 0 is the line that we want. Um, it's probably not sufficient. So there's a couple of ways that we can explain this. Number one, see some bit more detail. Um, if we consider the first graph, 2x squared minus x minus 1,
if I substitute, um, if I sub a negative x into this, so I replace all the x's with negative x's, I get 2x squared plus x minus 1. And considering the other graph, the other graph was um, negative 2x squared minus x plus 1. That equals the negative of 2x squared minus x plus 1. So what that means is that, if I bring that graph back up again, if I take a coordinate on one of the graphs, and I consider the negative x value, it will give me the opposite y value. So at this moment, 0 0.47, if I do x equals negative 0 0.47, and then flip the y coordinate upside down, I'm on the other graph. Okay, so what that means is that there is 180 degree rotational symmetry. So I could say like this, this graph here is my, is my f, and when I substitute negative x into it, I get negative g. Okay, therefore, 180 degree rotational symmetry. About origin. Okay, so that's kind of explaining why the line x equals 0 divides the region in half. Um, if you did an integral approach, um, you need to find the limits the intersection points, which is to equate the two um, equations together. The points of intersection, you can do the detail here, ends up being plus or minus 1 over root 2. So what we're doing is we're integrating between negative 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2. The top function, top function is the negative parabola, minus the bottom function, with respect to x. We don't have to do two integrals for this. When it's an area enclosed between two functions, you integrate the top function, top function there, minus the bottom function. Integrate the difference. So if we do that, we do a little bit of tidying up, um, you end up having to integrate um, negative 4x squared um, plus 2. Now this is an even function and we're integrating it over two limits that are, one's a negative of the other. So that means that um, x equals 0 will be the midpoint that divides it. But a little bit more detail for that, minus 4x cubed over 3 plus 2x. Um, if we find this value, 1 over root 2 to minus 1 over root 2, so whatever that equals, and then we do the same integral, But this time we integrate it just between um, x equals some value a and 1 over root 2, you'll find that um, for the second one, this one here to be half of the first one, a u has to be 0. So you could set up an equation that says the second one equals half of the first, solve it. But of course that's a little bit unnecessary given we've already found the answer and justified it. Okay, the fourth question is uh, just a nice u substitution. Um, so we're integrating between 0 and 2. x over root x plus 1. Um, and the reason why u substitution works quite nicely, the denominator has uh, two terms in it underneath the square root. And so if I make u equal to x plus 1, then that denominator is just going to become square root u. Um, du will be equal to dx. Okay, the derivative for respect to x is 1, so du equals dx. Uh, and then x, the thing that's at the top at the moment, is equal to u minus 1. So we end up getting u minus 1 there, du there. And then lastly, the limits. When x is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When x is equal to 2, u is equal to 3. So my limits become um, 1 and 3. You don't have to change the limits, but because we're integrating with respect to u, it makes sense to make those u values. Um, then we can simplify this now. Because I've turned the denominator into a single term, I can now do the division. u divided by root u 
is u to the half. And 1 divided by root u is equal to minus u to the negative 1 half. Okay, and then I can anti-diff that. u to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 is the same as times in the 2 thirds. Minus a half goes to positive half. When I add one to it, divide by a half is the same as timesing by two. Three and one. And then if I sub in three, then sub in one, find the subtraction or find the difference. Sorry, I get four thirds. Um, and this is another one that your graphics calculator can do. I'll show you here on Desmos, but your graphics calculator can do definite integrals. I'll just type an int integral between zero and two. If you don't know how to do it on your graphics calculator, just ask your teacher, they'll, they'll show you. x divided by square root x plus 1. dx to finish the job. Okay, that tells us 1.333, which is 4 thirds. Of course, you have to show the integration to get the marks in the scholarship exam, but or even in your level 3 exam, but 4 thirds is the answer. Okay, the last question is another one that we could actually make a graph of. So first up... What do we do with the absolute value symbols? So if I type in um, the function but without absolute value symbols, students always um, have this idea that they can just get rid of symbols and questions, like with log problems, just, oh, let's just get rid of the logs. So can we actually just get rid of the absolute value symbols? Are they needed? Let's have a look. So that's what sine x minus cos x looks like. It's just a squashed um, trig wave. It's got intercepts at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And you can see that that region there between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 looks exactly the same. It's exactly the same as the absolute value because in that region the function's positive so the absolute value symbol does nothing. But where it's negative, so in this region between 5 pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4, Okay, because it's negative, the absolute value symbol flips it upside down. The absolute value of, say, negative 5 is equal to positive 5. So that's why it's been flipped upside down here. But what that means, though, is for this particular problem to find this integral, if we want the area, we could find this area here, no problem. We just integrate between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Um, the function sine x minus cos x, we don't need the absolute value symbols there. They do nothing. So if we integrate that, sine integrates to negative cos x, minus cos goes back to minus sine, between 5 pi over 4 and pi over 4, uh, and you'll find that that equals 2 root 2 if you do the substitutions and work an exact form. Um, you might get a decimal, just notice that the decimal is 2 root 2, um, you can also upgrade your graphics calculator so it works in nice thirds. That's quite helpful. Um, and then because we haven't found all the area, we just need to realise that this little area here between 0 and pi over 4 can be tacked on there. And then that area that we're missing is just the same as the one we've already found. Okay, so the total area, therefore area required is twice what we already found, 2 times 2 root 2, 4 root 2. Okay, so that's um, question 1 done. Hopefully you found that video useful, and we'll catch you in the next one.